Welcome to Jurassic Park. They move in herds. They do move in herds. Greetings, survivors and friends, Shadow Franks here, and welcome to another map video where I'm showing you a custom map in Rust, which I like to do every now and again. And today, the map in question is Isla Nublar. And if that sounds familiar and you didn't already get the massive hint at the beginning, this map is based on the world of Jurassic Park. It's by a map maker called Electric, who I haven't featured before, and if you want to know where to get your hands on this, it is a paid map, but I'll put the link in the description below. Before we get stuck into the custom dinosaur monuments, we'll just say this is a 4K map, and you will find pretty much all of the usual monuments here as well, so there's nothing really that's left out. The island shape is very much based on the real thing. <laughs> well, the movies. But to start with, we'll go to the visitor's center, where you will find a life-size T-Rex skeleton, as seen in the original, but here it's made entirely out of rocks. You wouldn't really know, but then to be honest, they are pretty much made out of rock anyway. Here though, you will find a jump puzzle above and around the skeleton, leading you to a fuse box that you will need to insert a fuse into in order to get any further into the complex. But when you do, you'll be able to go to the dining hall and of course the famous kitchens, along with accessing a restricted area which leads to an underground lab. There are no dinos to see down here, sadly, just a scarecrow, but in a good use of seasonal items, you will find some eggs. Come on, lad. Push! After solving a puzzle involving pressing a few buttons and installing a fuse, you'll open the door to the control room next door and some extra loot. No secret lab chairs though. Missed a bit of a trick there, I think. Then out the back, there's an emergency exit which leads you back to the park. Electric seems to have done the best job he possibly could with the rust assets we have, and there's a lot of attention to detail to be seen here. But some of my favourite parts are the Jurassic Park gates, complete with torches and authentic font, and the fences which wall off parts of the park. Well, nearly. I think we all know what happened there. The really nice touch about these, though, is how all of the fences are scalable, and yes, the electricity is off, I've checked. In line with the film, there's also an above-ground train track that runs around the park along the centre of the road, and this is connected to several stations along its length where work carts spawn. Before I go on, I've got to pay the gas bill, so here's a quick sponsor. This is you, living your best life on the internet, but everyone wants to know what you're doing, presumably to emulate your success. If you'd rather not be watched while you're trying to do totally legal and above-board things, though, you need a VPN. More precisely, NordVPN. A virtual private network is like a secret bunker that hides your IP address and encrypts your data, letting you surf with anonymity. NordVPN is officially the fastest one out there, letting you connect to well over 5,000 servers in 60 countries from wherever you happen to be. Are you really India Bollywood movies? Your actual location's no longer a problem. Tired of living among US and want to know what it's like to live among EU? It's none of my business. You can use it on PC, Mac, Android, iOS, Chrome, and probably even a Lego brick. It works whilst you're out and about, comes with a cybersecurity suite, an ad blocker, and can be used on up to six devices simultaneously with unlimited bandwidth. Most of all, if you're quick, you can get a two-year plan for 73% off, plus an extra month absolutely free by using my link down below or with code SHADOWFREX. Back to the video, and around the Central Park area, there are a number of custom mini monuments, including a residential compound for guards with quite a bit of loot to grab and a few guards in residence. And a bit further on, Nubler Genetics, which is protected by scientists and includes a domed enclosure with more loot, ore nodes and a recycler. Best of all though, I think, is the Raptor Pen. Again, quite faithful to the original set, but you'll have to squint your brain a bit and pretend the occupants are actually raptors and not just a bunch of angry scarecrows. Clever boys. If you do brave this though, there's a whole underground section to loot and recycle in. I did say there are pretty much all the standard monuments here too, but one is conspicuous by its absence, and that's the Scientist Compound. Well, it is actually here in the centre of the park, with all the facilities and shops you'd expect to find, but it was subject to change and reimagined as the Wooden Compound, in keeping with the aesthetics of the rest of the park buildings. Across a bridge to the eastern part of the island is perhaps the most important 
impressive structure here, the Terror Dome, basically an enormous overgrown budgie cage with its own Terror Cafe and a technical center where you'll find a blue key card and details of the structure's CCTV cameras. The Terror Dome is an enormous space inside and contains a ton of walkways and stairs leading up to a jump puzzle at the top that'll make you long for the relative safety of the old sphere tank jump. Ah, uh, memories. There's an absolute shed load of loot here too, if you come prepared. And no, you can't bring a minicopter in here. As well as Isla Nubla, another two islands from the Muertas archipelago make an appearance, although not to scale or shape. But who's really bothered? It's all fiction. Unless... A huge scientist-controlled bridge leads to the easternmost island, so big in fact that you can just drive right the way over the top if you want, and when you get to Isla Pina, you can explore the train yard and the park office where all the exciting dinosaur-related paperwork is taken care of. I'm sure there was certainly a lot of that thanks to certain events. A large train tunnel entrance here will lead you into the heart of what you'll see when you get to the top. It's actually a volcano and here you'll also find a locked cabin with a blue key card and some loot. Back to the main island and on the southern tip you'll find a heliport, nicely positioned to service the launch site and then past this and the power plant you can take a leisurely trip by work cart through a long tunnel and over another big bridge to Isla Tacaño in the west. This island is dominated by a large lagoon which on the surface just looks like a nice place to relax next to of an afternoon, but it actually hides a rather large secret. This is the site of the underwater observatory, which you can get to by going through here. This leads you through another huge underground complex, eventually popping out at the end of a long tunnel into the observatory itself. And I've got to say, I really like this one. It's got a nice feel to it, something about being under the sea and looking out at the wildlife and the odd submarine. A puzzle here will get you into the central room with recyclers, a research bench, more loot and a tunnel that leads down into more of the complex. And after a long journey through corridors, on a work cart and up a staircase, you'll find yourself back out in the open. One more thing that you might spot on the map is this red exclamation mark and this very helpfully shows the location of a not so secret underwater tradesman's entrance that if you take a submarine through will lead you along a series of caverns before emerging in the lagoon. Very handy. So what do I think of Isla Nubla? Well, I'd say the level of polish on this map is very high, with the terrain having been sculpted in World Creator and based on the movie Island. The custom monuments are consistently good and about as faithful to the set as possible with Rust's prefabs, but there has been enough restraint shown to make sure that all the elements fit together with the actual Rust stuff, which is good to see. The Electric has also just added the new Desert Monument too, so everything is bang up to date. It is a fairly large map, but for server owners who can fill it, I think it'll provide a lot of scope for players to explore and live out their dino fantasies. Uh, not those ones. In fact, I think there's only one thing that would improve it further, but I don't reckon it would do the frame rates any good. Thanks to Electric for letting me film on the map. If you're interested in running this yourself, you'll find the details of where to get it in the description below, and I want to know your thoughts on it too, so please let rip in the comments. Leave a like, sub to the channel for more fun stuff like this, and check me out also on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, and my Steam group, where you can stay up to date with my content. You can support me on Patreon if you wish, or or even just buy yourself a nice subject to change mug or t-shirt on my merch store. I shall catch you all soon, of course, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio. This video is powered by AWDIT's producer range of workstation PCs, available now at awdit.co.uk. They do move in herds.